your king. Take him. Take him! Take him! Take him! Welcome to the Game of Thrones Iron Podcast, Season 4, Episode 2, The Lion and the Rose. I'm here with Rose Snow, bitch of Westeros. Hello. And I'm Mike Sand, and we're going to talk about Episode 2. What a, Season that, 4. What a great episode, huh? That was definitely a wow episode. That was a holy, what, WTF crazy episode i had an anxiety attack <laughs> you had an anxiety attack yeah why i was very surprised that's yeah and again like we said ro is unspoiled she has never read the books and i kind of saw it coming but it was really great uh really i mean they usually follow the the ninth episode's always the wow episode right the reigns of castamir the black water ned losing his head but this season no nah, we're not waiting for episode right. nine we're doing it right away right so uh, me and Ro got a wedding. the purple wedding, which I believe is because Joffrey's face turns purple, or it could uh, be because of the wine. Questionable. Um, Some even told me the purple means royalty. Uh, I've heard a lot of reasons why it's a purple wedding. I'm not even that sure why. But. Well, the red wedding still takes the <clears throat> cake on the purple wedding. So that's well, for the, sure. I think I know why it's the red wedding. Yeah. Because of the blood spill. It wasn't good. So we both got a top five, me and Ro, and uh, Ro, why don't you start us off? What's your five? Well, uh, in the opening of episode two, we basically immediately come into play with Ramsay and Theon, and now Theon has been completely turned into Reek. Hmm. And I was very surprised um, to see the girl running through the woods, and they're, you know, basically torturing her. And Theon is lucky enough to get to watch. Um, Theon's reaction to his female victim was very surprising. Um, it seemed to disgust him in the same sense he was useless to the situation. So that was a big turn in Theon's character because Theon's usually the um, I think I'm a badass kind of guy where you know he, he seems to think he can conquer Winterfell and he can do basically anything uh, since he's getting got scorned by his father. But um, I thought it was very interesting to see his reaction to that scene where the girl is eaten by the dogs. And, you know, of course, we also go into the scene where Theon is asked to shave Ramsay, and it's obviously a test for his father, uh, Bolton, where, you know, he wants to show that he has tamed this Greyjoy. You know, and I think that, I think you know that he's not going to slit his throat. Um, but part of you is wishing he would. <laughs> That's actually my number five. Are you, are you, okay. Are you good? Yeah, so my number five was Theon shaving Ramsey. But I was interested in what you're saying, that Theon used to be, you know, the type to interject, but dare I say he was neutered? Right. Right. Well, anyway, yeah, but Theon shaves Ramsey. And uh, the whole time, you just like, wouldn't you, if you were Theon, wouldn't you just slit the guy's throat and get killed? Well, I Why think not go Theon out on knew, that note? Theon knew that it was going to be instant death. If he but did. what the hell has he got to live for at this point? Listen, he's been tortured enough. He uh, doesn't want any more. Honestly, I would, you know what I'd do? I'd slit his throat and then slit my own throat. At least you go out with a bang. But yeah, that, that whole tension there, um, that scene was interesting. You know, Ramsay definitely got a front seat in this episode. I kind of feel like Ramsay's going to be our new Joffrey, our new hate this freaking guy. You know, the new bad, big bad guy is going to be Ramsay Snow. I mean, the guy chops somebody's, you know, cock off. I think he's pretty much, doesn't get much worse than that. So that, that's, I think, um, and it was interesting too that Lord Bolton didn't really want to give him the credit that he's a Bolton and making right. him earn it. Right. By um, taking well, over Well, I think Mo that Kaelin. maybe that's what, <clears throat> what jades him, is makes him a little nuts, is that he's he is rejected as a Bolton, and he is, you know, he's a snub. I mean, a real bastard son. Treated like right. a bastard son. Right. Very, put in your, I'll put you in your place immediately kind of relationship, you know, similar to Theon and his father, which is interesting, the relationship between Ramsay and Theon. But I think that the whole point there was to show, you know, 
I've brainwashed this kid and I've pulled it off. I think he's the first bastard that's treated like a bastard because Jon Snow got treated pretty good. Yeah. You know what I mean? Except and, for Catelyn. Except for Cat. Very, very true. Good right. point. But, you know, as far as bastards go, um, he's really being treated like that and I'm really looking forward to when they meet up with Theon's sister. I'm so very much so looking that, forward. That's going to her, be pretty her, cool. Yara showing her presence here. Yeah. I'm definitely looking forward to it. So that was my number five too. So we might as well go to your number four. Okay. Uh, at this point in the episode, Shay has been discovered. Yes. We now know that Shay is the whore. And it, you know, it surprised me because Shay has been this handmaiden for quite some time now. And um, Surprise is still referring to her as the whore. And I guess, you know, that's just a disrespect kind of jab at, at uh, Tyrion. But, you know, all in all, we then see Shay completely rejected by, by him as well. And, you know, he basically tells her, you need to go. Of course he's protecting her. We know he's protecting her. But I think Sansa does play a role here. Uh, again, as we had discussed in episode one of season four was that Tyrion is now a married man and I think that there is a, a respect for Sansa where he says to himself I got to get rid of her uh she's not good for me now and he is protecting her um so yes they're on to the fact that it is Shay and that she is the one that Tyrion has been you know hooking up with on the side and you know lo and behold they get her out of there in time, which is, I'm sure, a plus. Well, supposedly. Supposedly. Now, you know, I have a big problem with not showing me... Listen, if you don't show me her on the boat, sailing away, I'm doubtful that she's gone. Well, let's not forget how much Tyrion trusts Bronn, and Bronn gave his word. He saw the ship sail away with her on it. Yeah, I, I just... Bronn kind of skirted around it a little bit. He didn't say... He's like, yeah, yeah, trust me, She's gone. You Nothing know. can stop her from coming back. Right. So that's my, my number two. Okay. Well, my number four is Bronn training Jamie. Um, really awesome. In the books, it's actually uh, Sir Ellen, Ellen Payne. Uh, from what I heard, the actor that played Sir Ellen Payne actually uh, left the show. He um, supposedly got sick, I believe, with something. But um, we kind of got this interesting with Bronn being the one training Jamie. I, I love it because I love that scene. You know, because Bronn is one of my favorites. I mean, I, I, I don't know if you feel that way too, right? I definitely admire his character. Yeah, so I, I'm really happy to see those two together now, and uh, you know, s- kind of show how uh, Bronn is kind of a dirty fighter. Maybe he's gonna, you know, and Jamie was always a dirty fighter too. If you go back to season one, the way he stuck that dagger in the guy's eye. You know, but um, I think it's a really cool match and probably get a lot of good stuff out of that. So I'm excited for that. So I thought opinion. it was a great choice. Definitely trustworthy. Definitely not going to go leaking secrets and things like that. So That's mine for number four. Okay. Got? For three. Of course, I'm going to go to uh, the Red Viper himself. Um, I definitely was interested to see him standing there with Tywin and Cersei. Uh, he's, he's finally got his face-to-face. And it's very subliminal, and it's very uh, clever. I loved how he mentioned, you know, of course we have the whole, you know, I'm making my point about, uh, you know, women and children being killed and murdered and raped and whatever the situation was, but I loved the subliminal jab how Cersei's daughter, Marcella, is in Dorne. As if to say, she'll be next. Yeah. He's saying it without saying it. And it is an interesting turn, you know, it's like uh, that whole vengeance, and I liked it. Yeah, I, I definitely enjoyed that. I like Tywin's face. He was like, oh, this guy's going to be trouble. You know, he knew right away, but like while he's telling him, he's like, okay, this is my next thing I got to deal with. So you see Tywin's gears are turning, all right, you know, the Viper's a problem. Um, and that's why everyone keeps saying, uh, where's your brother? <laughs> yeah, right, because the brother, supposedly, we didn't meet him yet, but he's more cool and collected right. more of a where Maturing. the red viper is right. you know uh, i liked i liked how uh, cersei kind of kind of jabbed the the sand girl the, the girlfriend there the paramour right. and, the sand the, snake, right. and she's like i have a you know i have a thousand brothers and sisters and you know 10, again 000. showing yeah right 10,000 and also showing that in dorn they don't look down on bastards and just kind of giving a little more background about the the dorn 
uh, you know, culture. Well, which, Dorne is portrayed to be a very sexual place. Like I had said in the in the last podcast we did, it's a very erotic. Like type loose, of, I feel. Right, loose. right. Anything goes. Right. So yeah, you're gonna have bastards coming out of that deal. Of right. Course. That that makes sense. All right, my number three is uh, Loris and Jamie. Really quick, just that that line from Loris. I, I loved it. It was like you know, Jamie's sitting there and he's trying to intimidate him, saying you're not, you know, you can't marry her. And he just hits, a, you know, just hits Jamie on the shoulder and says, "You're never gonna marry her either." Right. That that was just fantastic line. I was cracking up with that. Well, um, but notice that Loris didn't say you'll never have kids with her. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like Jamie said to Loris. <laughs> yeah. Exactly, and you know, and uh, the thing with Loris is, I feel like Loris. I mean, Loris is always a big warrior, but I feel like Jamie isn't as scary as he used to be now. Right. You know, people. I mean, maybe Loris would be a little bit more weary of saying that, but I feel like Jamie's gay. He lost his fighting hand. Maybe he's a little bit more of a target. Well, Loris you know, is not much to sneeze at No, himself. he ain't. No, I'm, uh, he's definitely a great fighter, but, you know, I just feel like Jamie, Jamie's, it's tough. Jamie's got to kind of live like Tyrion now. Jamie's got to learn how to not be this big, tough guy. got to use his mind more. And I, right. I'm noticing that he is not he's as struggling. witty as his brother is. Right. So he's got a lot to learn. Right. So that that's that old. So. It's not as clever as half man. No, not half. So, you know, touching back on um, another scene that I had in mind, you know, similarly to what I had just brought up with the Red Viper, is uh, the part where the Meister is talking to Cersei, and she basically tells him, "Take the leftovers to the kitchen and feed." You know, I'm sorry, to the kennel rather than the kitchen. And feed it to the dogs. And he says, but the queen said, I have to feed it to the poor. And he, she says, no, I told you to take it to the kennel and feed the dogs or we'll be feeding you to the dogs. <laughs> yeah. And it's just like, you know, we already know Cersei's character. I mean, this chick is just batshit crazy. The actress pulls it off fantastic because in real life, she's batshit crazy. <laughs> so she pulls it off really well. And... You know, she, she really does believe in her mind that she is still the queen. And it's, it's amusing. But another thing that I was thinking about was what I had just, you know, is it's almost like the Red Viper also in that same segment jabs Cersei and says, you're not the queen anymore. So, again, he's saying it as if he's being conversational. But he's jabbing her, by all means. So it's pretty... It's pretty uh, I don't know. I just, I thought it was very, very well done. Yeah. I, I feel like Cersei's, this is something that's coming. She's unraveling. Right. She's like, and and again, I, I think back to the whole thing and like, I almost feel like Cersei didn't think this whole plan through. Like, you know, taking over, I, again, I think we all agree that she was kind of behind Robert Baratheon's death, you know, with that Lancel guy getting him drunk when he's out hunting Ah, that's tough to say. Well, I, I, I don't. I never felt that she was behind it, but I did definitely think she was uh, grateful that he dropped dead. That where, I did. Feel. Where I feel like she shouldn't. I mean, I feel like this isn't the best move to have Joffrey as king, and okay, so your son's king, and you're you're the queen regent, but that's gonna wear off when Joffrey gets married, and now what right. are you? You're the you're the weird stepmother. You're not right. the queen. Right. So I just feel like. She's really, her plan's coming unraveled, and I just feel like she's really going to really show us how batshit crazy she is coming soon. I don't, de- I don't deny that. You know? She's already showing us, <clears throat> in my opinion. Yeah, definitely. She's like in denial or something weird. All right, so my number two is, well, you know, we all know Joffrey kicks it in this one, which, you know. So I'm gonna, the show had to give us a last taste of what a douche Joffrey is. And I loved it, and that's my number two is, Joffrey just completely trolling everybody. I, I and of course it's the little halftime show he put on with the with the I guess you would say the dwarves mm-hmm. the dwarf show. Hilarious. I know it was important. It was definitely which was of course a jab on everybody. His uncle. Everybody. Mainly. Mainly. His uncle. Mainly. Mainly Tyrion. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. But okay. So you got you got Renly's dwarf coming out with his ass hanging out. Clearly, you know, jabbing on the fact that him and Loras were. Yeah. You know, boyfriend gay. Right. Got got Renly sticking a freaking uh, club up the ass of that one. Mm. You know, and Loris just walks out. He's had enough. You see the faces on all the people at the grand... What would you call that? The pew? The, right. Right at the wedding? Was it the, the, at the main table there? 
all disgusted. The only one who right. loves it is Cersei. Right. Which is just proof that Cersei's the reason Joffrey's like this. Right. I mean, th- she's like, that's my boy. Right. So, again, Cersei is the worst mother on the planet. Um, so, and the, the whole thing was hilarious. And then, and then uh, the humping of the of the wolf head at the end, seeing Sansa's face. Right. Just... Just to, just in case you weren't sure that Joffrey deserves to die, just one last time you get to see it. It was well. It was really. It was. It was. Well, he 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 repeatedly <laughs> job, jabs Sansa at the wedding. Right. And he you know also says every time he uses his Valerian sword now he's going to feel like he's cutting off Ned's head all <laughs> yeah. over again. All over again. The girl takes more shit than you can imagine. Yeah. I mean, I I personally. I would have killed him already myself. And the you know the Tyrion thing, forget it. You know, dumping the wine on his head, making him kneel. Yeah, you, know, you had like a whole kneel to Zod moment, like Superman, like right. you know, kneel, kneel before me. And of course, Marjorie comes to the rescue, like you know the pie. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so yeah, let's this pigeon pie is just like um, what what is pigeon pie, and why would I want to eat? This? <laughs> I don't know. Like maybe back in the day, that was a thing. I I, I don't know. I don't know because in this day, pigeons are the dirtiest birds. They're like rats you with can wings, find. right? That's exactly. a good point. Yeah, I don't think I'd want pigeon pie. Yeah, it's just it, you know, and he's got they got like a dead dove in there, and well, that's because Joffrey chopped one right. in half. I right, think, that's he, my point. You know, so that's uh, just Joffrey being a douche is my number two. Right. So well, my number one moment leading up to the purple wedding scene is um, Olena going up to Sansa and uh, talking about the Red Wedding. Mm. And she basically says, uh, what sort of monster would do such a thing at a wedding? Yeah. Referring to people dying at a wedding. And you laugh because what we now know, what I didn't know at the time, is that Olena's in on this. So when she says that line, what what, what kind of a monster would do this at a wedding? Is absolutely hilarious to me now. So that is just definitely, I mean, one of my favorites. And then, of course, she walks away and says, I guess I'll go eat some of this food that I paid for. And I loved it. It's just. Isn't she awesome? She can't stand the Lannisters, and she is the one with the balls to say it. Yeah. It's great. She is, she's my favorite character, and she was not even close to as cool as this in the books. Right. Like she, that actress, I don't know her name, I should probably know that, but. Uh, she's fantastic. Love that character. Right. So, um, you ready for the death? I'm ready. All right. My number one is the death of Joffrey. Now, I did read the books, but I am any, every, everything I'm about to say is just from watching the show extremely closely and a hundred times. So, um, I'm going to talk about the death of Joffrey um, and the poisoning. <clears throat> now, if you watch the show, the part where actually Roseanne just, which you were just talking about, was when Olenna, uh, Lady Olenna talk to Sansa. Right. You see her fixing her hair. If you noticed, uh, she picks something off. She actually looks like she picked something off of her neck. What she did was she took one of the gems off that necklace. Uh, that because Dantos gave that her. That Dantos gave her. So that implies that now we, we all have a feeling that Dantos is obviously in on it because... The fool. Dantos is the, the fool, fool for those who you don't know who don't know that. Right. So the fool, we kind of all know because at the end when Joffrey died, he tells Sansa, we got to get out of here. He, he says, knew. if you want to live, we need to leave now. He knew what was going on. So we know that. Now the necklace, if you look at the, if you pause the video right after Lady Olena is talking to her, you'll see one of the gemstones is missing off the necklace. I've seen it a thousand times. Just watch it. It's there. It's um, right on the lapel of Sansa's dress. Right. You'll actually see it like it should be holding something and it's not. Now, as far as when the poison gets in the cup, the only person I saw that had her hand on top of the cup at that time would be Marjorie. Now, I'm not positive because it's not definite, but you see the hand go over the cup for a second, and that's my that's my guess of what's happening. Now, uh, again, I'm not going off of anything I know in the books. I'm just going off of what I did watch the video, and um, really cool. I mean, man, the Tyrells really sold it. The, the way they were like, you know, help the boy, help the boy, he's choking. Oh, right, the and Tyrells, if if they were, if we're right, they're they're totally actresses. They're it's awesome. just fantastic. And then I guess it's just luck right. that this whole thing with Tyrion and Joffrey with the cupbearer just happened to happen. Well, right, so they the got Tyrells the perfect scapegoat. They don't care if, if Tyrion takes the blame, they could care less. What great luck for them that they got the scapegoat being right. Tyrion. 
so many people in on this. You have Dantos. Yeah. You have the grandmother, Olina. You have Marjorie in on it. You have Sansa in it. I think Who doesn't seem to know know. she's even in on it. Another thing that I thought was interesting was where they chose to put the poison on that necklace was where it would not be touching Sansa's skin. Yeah. (laughs) So that really, again, confirmed to me that there was obviously poison in that gem. And then, you know, whoever else, maybe whoever made that necklace or whomever else was in on this was definitely an interesting take. But, of course, Tyrion, I don't think for a second was. No, obviously he's being framed. And then I was just thinking to myself, what would it have been like if Tyrion didn't go through all that stuff? Like, let's just say there was no obviousness that Tyrion was the cupbearer. Right. What would have happened? Like, Joffrey just would have died. I think the eyes would have been more on the Tyrells. But I feel like just because of the luck of... I mean, how could they know that Joffrey was gonna was gonna really harass Tyrion that much to make him the prime suspect? Well, they figured that Joffrey was gonna piss somebody off, and then you have to remember that Marjorie probably did know who he was targeting as his wife. She mm. would know that. So you know, maybe she knew about the dwarf show. Maybe she I'm knew. I'm sure she did. Maybe that was it. You know, right. like that was gonna get blood flowing. Right. They were going to frame somebody and they didn't care who. And I know Joffrey, I mean, just from his character, he probably would brag to Sansa, oh, you can't wait till you see what I'm going to do to my uncle. Right. Maybe that. To Marjorie. Yeah. Right. To Marjorie. And then really cool. Well well done, right? It was like a real whodunit moment. I mean, you watch it the first time, you don't know what the hell's going on, right? The scene was absolutely disgusting. Yeah. It was definitely disgusting. (laughs) Um, You know, you have Cersei there. You have Jamie there. You have Olena screaming, you know. Help your king, you idiots, which was great. <laughs> and um, it was definitely a fantastic scene. And, and, it, and then you see Tyrion pick, picking up the, the glass, like just probably right. just to look at it. Right. And they're all like, like he's caught with red handed. Like, who the hell would poison the king and then pick up the glass? Like, it's so obvious it's not him. to see but... what's, in, the, what's right. in this glass that just caused this. Really well. My first thoughts was that it could be the pie, but then obviously it's. The wine. Well, then everybody would have been poisoned. I think everybody was eating the pie. I don't know. I think. I don't remember. I don't believe so. I think Joffrey was the only one. Even yeah. Marjorie hadn't. You don't see even Marjorie eating it. What a great episode. I'm excited for the next one. You know, that's, uh, you know, the aftermath. I don't, I don't, I'm a little scared for Tyrion. We'll see where this goes. Well, I'm sure somebody's going to step in. Perhaps uh, Tywin would be smart enough to know that Tyrion wouldn't pull that. Maybe. Maybe. Joffrey, Joffrey had a lot of enemies, so... You got anything else? No, that wraps it up for me. All right, guys. We'll see you next time. All righty. Bye-bye. Bye.